If you've ever looked around your house and thought, mm, what is it about this room, this home that doesn't feel quite right? You are not alone because every single day of the week, we get comments and emails and DMs from you guys telling us something feels off. I can't put my finger on it. If you have been to uh, your friend's homes, if you've ever gone house hunting, you may know this same exact feeling. When you walk into a space and you're like, why did they do that? It really cheapens the space. This is the video for you because you are going to understand that there are some things that we can do to our homes that seriously cheapen the way that it feels. The good news is that most of these are actually very easy fixes. <laughs> There's a couple that might be a little bit more involved, but most of them are actually really easy fixes. So make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already, because we're about to hit 350,000 subscribers and we're close. So please hit subscribe so we can cross that finish line. <laughs> keep going but let's jump into today's video all right the number one thing okay these are a few of these things all right just gonna be honest this may need a follow-up <laughs> but one of the first things that i always notice in a home is let's call it flimsy lighting let's call it uh, low quality lighting, uh, maybe poorly installed lighting. There's a lot of things, okay? Lighting that is not done well can be extremely obvious. Even when you're working on a budget, you can still look at that lighting that you are getting in and say, this lighting looks like crap. <laughs> Because you know what I'm saying. Sometimes it just doesn't look good. And if you ordered it, send it back. <laughs> Don't try to justify it. Don't take the easy road because a lot of us do that. Or you maybe you bought a house and it came with the lighting and there's just something off about it. It just may just be poorly installed. It might just be that the finishes on it aren't very nice. Sometimes st stuff just isn't made well and you see it and you feel it in a room. I think that you can still go to places like Home Depot and uh, Amazon. I've gotten some great bathroom lighting from there recently, but I ordered like four or five options and I kept one. Okay, so every time it comes in, I'm like, mm, just doesn't feel like that great a quality. And sometimes the item that was less expensive looked better. So I think being a little bit hypercritical of your space will actually help you get ahead. Also check out places like West Elm and Pottery Barn if you're working on a little bit lower budget. But then if you really want to invest the money, which I do suggest, cheaping out on the lighting is actually gonna affect the resale value of your home. So I really look quite a bit actually on visual comfort for their lighting. It is better quality than most of what you're gonna find anywhere else. And it's gonna save you from having to hunt constantly for really good lighting. And you might be surprised about some of the prices there. Even though it is designer, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna cost a fortune. Some of it does, but not all of it. Let's just pull the Band-Aid off. Cheap flooring. Ooh, it really, really affects the value of your home. So for us, we work in the luxury market. So for us in the Atlanta area, that's gonna be a million plus. And sometimes we'll go into homes and they've used like a luxury vinyl tile in the living, main living space. I know a lot of people use that in basements. It's not my favorite product, but it's not the end of the world. But there's a certain expectation in a certain price range that you will have a certain kind of home. And most people in our area, when they see even an engineered hardwood, they're just like, no, 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 no. I, I'm not gonna spend this kind of money and have that kind of cheap flooring. It, it's real. <laughs> you can be mad at me all you want about it, but it's a real thing. So when you're thinking about putting in your flooring, I would think about what kind of homes are available in your area and what the flooring is, like what's most typical, right? For many of us living in the US, that's gonna be hardwood floors. Flooring is literally the foundation of all of your rooms. And so when you cheap out on the flooring, it is going to affect the feeling of the entire home. There is one thing that will definitely cheapen a room, especially the bedroom, and that's the mattress. So if you have a mattress that has, you know, the indent <laughs> of the people who've been sleeping in it, <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're super lumpy and you can actually see it through the bedding. 
or sometimes they're like super thin. Well, those are all things that will definitely cheapen the look of a space. But let's be honest, it's also something that will cheapen your experience and give you a rough night's sleep. So I am very excited that Birch is our video sponsor today because they changed my life especially because about a year ago, uh, we had what I thought was a great mattress. Oh man, oh man, was I ever mistaken. I noticed that I'd started to have some back problems and I thought, oh, I just pulled a muscle or something working out. No, it was the mattress, guys. Birch uh, asked if we'd like to try out their uh, one of their mattresses and my mind was blown. What an experience. It is absolutely amazing. Now, when I said yes, there were a few things I wanted to do. I wanted to check and make sure what I was saying yes to. So I was looking at the Birch mattresses and what really caught my attention was the fact that they're free from polyurethane foam, which can cause dangerous off-gassing. They're also free from fiberglass, which can be very harmful to your health. The Birch, the Birch Lux mattress is what I ended up going with and it has eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. They have the Lux model has the quilted pillow top on the top of it. It also has targeted zoned lumbar support, which provides enhanced contouring. I, these were all things that really, really grabbed my attention. As if all that is not enough, when you order a birch mattress, it literally arrives at your door. So it's really convenient, arrives at your door, really easy to just open the box and unfold it right in place. You can even have an in-home setup if you would like to. Looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. Visit birchliving.com backslash Valentina to get 20% off a birch mattress plus two free eco rest pillows. For your little ones, also check out the Birch Kids Natural Mattress, which is a 2023 Good Housekeeping Parenting Awards winner. Birch Living is having great flash sales as well, so it's a great time to click the link down below and check out what sales they've got going on. But anytime is a good time to check out Birch Living and to really help not only elevate the way that your room feels, but elevate the way you feel in your room and where you're sleeping. Okay, let's talk about one. And you can tell me if I'm being nitpicky, but I really don't think I am. But I think that window coverings is like one of the biggest culprits that you're just like, oh, 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 that looks cheap. <laughs> you, you just have like the radar, you're like, your eye just goes to it. If you've got like those really cheap aluminum blinds, Oh, it's a dead giveaway, right? I think that most of the time this is about you and how you feel in a space and you know when something doesn't feel right. That's why I made this video. It's because of your comments and your emails, okay? That's where this stuff comes from. It's from you guys. So what makes the window coverings look cheap? Definitely those aluminum ones, the vertical blinds, it's just a total no-go. Uh, put up like some nice curtains over, you know, if you've got sliding doors or uh, if you're, you, I mean, you don't always have to have window coverings. <laughs> it just depends on where you are. Some people just have like these irrational fears that they just need window covering, okay? So I would consider having curtains over those double French doors uh, with a nice long uh, curtain rod over them. <sighs> I think that the curtains themselves sometimes can also be a culprit. If you've got the plastic backing on the back of your curtains, the blackout stuff that's plastic, it's just like, oh, it just looks super cheap. The curtains that have that blackout material on the back with the plastic, they never lay right. There's nothing you can do to make the curtains lay properly. So if you like a custom look and you don't want to do the custom route, I'm gonna leave a link for my Amazon storefront where I've bought a lot of curtains. If you watched my Ikea playlist, I talk nonstop about the curtains that I like. I'll leave the link for the playlist so you can check that out. Uh, I've got several sources where you can grab some great curtains that have, they can still have blackout lining, but they're high quality blackout lining. Or if you don't need all that, you can get them with a nice pleating. Uh, you can put the little rings on them. There's a lot of things you can do. But the curtains for sure, or the window coverings just in general, can really just make your space look cheap. The rug really is the foundation. 
I think we all know that if you've got a dirty doormat, if you've got a muddy carpet right at the front door, like everybody knows it's just gonna cheapen your space, right? You just know. But what about the rugs that you put into your rooms? Oh, I know, I'm going there, I'm going there. You know, that again, you guys asked for this video, so I'm delivering it, okay? <laughs> How do you know if a car, if a, if a rug is good quality? How do you know? Well, when they come and you can see through them because they're paper thin, send it back. <laughs> that is not good. And you can think that I'm crazy, but I have ordered a lot of rugs over the great many years and they come and I'm like, how do you even call that a rug? It's literally just rolled up paper. It's ridiculous. I'm personally not a fan of the washable rugs because they are so thin. Now, how do you think they're going into your washing machine? I know everyone, this is an unpopular opinion. I'm just gonna put that out there. I understand that there are some people that just love the idea of being able to throw it in the washing machine, but if your rug for your living room can fit into the washing machine, that's not good. <laughs> That is not good. That is not good. That means there's not enough there, right? I know they come with a little backing. I get it. That's not the only piece. It's too thin. They're just too thin. I personally really like to find rugs that have like a nice thickness to them. A rug inherently should feel plush underneath your feet. So if it is just so thin that you literally just boom, your foot is like, on the foundation of your house. You're just like, there's like concrete underneath this thing. There's literally nothing under this. That is too thin. Now you can, you can tweak this one. You might wanna look at getting a rug pad. A rug pad can really help add a little bit of thickness to your rug. But you might also wanna consider that the, the, the weave and the depth of the, the structure itself of the rug, these are things that you should be looking at before you ever even buy them. I think looking for nicer, thick rugs. I love to shop at Pottery Barn. I think that the value that you get from a Pottery Barn rug, West Elm is another great site where the rug quality is actually really, oh, our house, our house too. They're really good too. They have really good quality for the price. Ooh, yep, yep, yep. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. This is probably the biggest culprit. This is like the one that's just like, you have done yourself no favors. You should, oh, it's just bad. And that is shoddy work. <laughs> it just, it, it's just like, yeah, it's just instant death. You're just like, oh, this just kills me. It's because someone has either A, done the work themselves and done a really bad job. And if you are in a certain priced home, there's really no price home where anybody wants crappy quality, okay? There's really no price home where someone walks in and goes, this is the dream! <laughs> I was always dreaming of a house that looked like it was falling apart. This is it! <laughs> That's not what most people dream of, okay? Even DIYers are like, okay, we got some work to do here. You know, it's not like the dream isn't a broken house, <laughs> right? The dream is something that's done well. It's done with quality craftsmanship. It's done with integrity. So if you are a great DIYer, I'm not. There's no way. I, well, I could learn how to put tile in, but <laughs> that's not my skill set. <laughs> so it's gonna take me a long time to figure out how to do it right. And by then, I've probably bought so many supplies that I was better off paying somebody, okay? You have to weigh these things out. So maybe you are a great DIYer, but I'd make real sure <laughs> that you are actually a good DIYer and not just, you know, a hack. I hope you've enjoyed the tips and tricks. Hope you will hit subscribe if you have not already. Give the video a big thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments which of these items you are guilty of, which of these items is something maybe you inherited when you bought a home and you've been fixing it or need to fix it. I still have things I'm still fixing in my house. Yeah, that shoddy work one is just painful. When you open up electrical and there's literally like a Band-Aid holding something, you're just like, there's actually a Band-Aid fixing this. <laughs> This is not good. <laughs>
I don't know a lot about electrical, but I know that is not good. Let me know in the comments if you have faced any of those things. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. See you then. Bye.